Yo, what's going on, everyone? Welcome to this week's episode of River City 93. I'm your host, is Elliot. Um, I am in between that place of, like, awake and sleepy, but you're still, like, fully functional coming back from a road trip, so you don't know whether or not to unpack or be like, I'll leave it for two months down the road when I randomly walk across this bag and think about packing. But that's where I'm at. Matt, how are you, sir? No, all right. I thought you were going for a you know nice little joke about the game ending at one a.m. Well, that we'll get to that point. But yes, y'all to game. First of all, how are you, sir? How was this? Uh, yeah, good. I also was on a road trip today. Drove six hours home from Pittsburgh and at a Pirates game, most beautiful baseball stadium in America. I'll stand by that. Okay, all right. That's a super fun. I was not expecting. But yeah, Gabe, did you stay to the game for the game as well? Yeah, yeah, stayed the whole time. Yeah, y'all good. <laughs> y'all are good. I got the, but you might be smart. <laughs> yeah, well, that I got the triple, and I was just sitting there. I was just like, I'll get this to nine o'clock. They got to nine, and I saw nothing was happening. I was like, all right, I'm going home. I'm yeah, home. Dude, no, no regrets. I mean, it was, it's quite a story, you know. It's fun telling people that, you know, was there till one, and, uh, you know, Cleveland made it a game there at the end, but oh, yeah. did they? Yeah, Which I'm sure yeah. we'll, you know, we'll get to that. But yeah. it was, uh, it was fun. It was a fun atmosphere with like the people that did stay. I mean, there was probably like 35 or 40 people there left at the end, and you know, it was there was a lot of camaraderie. It was a good time. I'm sure the Cleveland, uh, Cleveland soccer club players heard everything, mm-hmm. everything that y'all said to them. Yeah, <laughs> that's. That's probably the fun part because also like when um it's like not low attendance, but like when it's low numbers like that, you can kind of hear what the players on the field are saying. Mm-hmm. And there was one part where who was it? I think Dakota was talking to Chandler about something. And he was just like, him, the fat one, Mark, him. <laughs> and I just started busting out laughing. <laughs> yeah. But that's the favorite part about hearing the players' audio. Kind of all of those reminds me of like the COVID days where like you can hear like the players audio. Um, I hear the players talk during games. That was also pretty cool as well. Yeah, it's fun. It's fun every now and then. I mean, I'd much, you know, still much prefer the you know packed sellout attendances, but yeah. once in a blue moon, you know, getting kind of the empty stadium, you know, it's kind of a nice throwback to the, the super old days when uh, nobody came to the games. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> right back in the old days. So let me get this straight. We had what the first thunder delay was. For, what two and a half hours? I think so. Well, uh, almost three hours. Yes, yeah. game was supposed to start at seven, and uh, game got started at like nine forty-five. I think. Oh god! Yeah. And then well, we had another one right at right after Emmy scored. Pretty close. It was like thirty-fifth minute because I was going back and watching the game today, and they didn't have, they haven't cut it at all. So on YouTube, it's like a. Six hour, forty five minute broadcast, oh, and, there's, and there's nothing there for like the first three hours. Yeah, <laughs> that but that second delay lasted a little bit over an hour because uh, it was at the thirty fourth, thirty fifth minute, and then play restarted at eleven thirty three. Wow. Yeah, that's wild. <laughs> it was wild. <laughs> that. That is wild. That is absolutely wild. So, and I know what I, I think when they came back, they just went straight to the second half. They were like, "Yeah, we're not, we're not gonna finish." No, this no, they did halftime. <laughs> they played the rest of the first half, did a did a full halftime, and then played second half plus I think five minutes of stoppage time. That's insane. Yeah, that's insane. crazy. That is crazy. I mean, these Cleveland players. First of all, I want to give hats off to them, man, because I. They question kickers somewhat. And some questions that I got about this game, but we'll talk about that starting now. So, first of all, for y'all, let me ask you this. 
whose stock is up and whose stock is down from this game on uh, on the day? Um, I mean, Emmy scored two goals. You know, it was. I think uh, I think Nathan tweeted vintage Emmy. You know, it was just like he got in good positions and he he put the ball away. You know, um, he also assisted the third goal, so he was involved in every goal. Um, and I, you know, I think that's gonna be. Like I think this is like kind of the slingshot for the rest of the year for him. Yeah. What about you, Matt? Anyone stock goes up for you? Yeah, I had two guys that uh, kind of stood out for me a little bit more in this game. Uh, one, Matt Bentley. You know, I thought he was you know very involved. Obviously, he had the assist on you know the first Emmy goal that you know interplay with him and Neil. Uh, you know, just carving up you know the Cleveland defense right there it was really impressive. But I thought just how active he was. You know, out on you know, the wing, that spot is wide open right now. And I think he yeah. did a, you know, good, uh, you know, job of, you know, making his case, you know, for how he can make an impact. And, you know, he had another, you know, he scored one that was called back, you know, for offside. I, I can't, couldn't tell if it was really offside or not, but it was a really nice finish you know, that he had. He created another one or two for himself that maybe he should have done a little better with, but he was active. And I think that's something that uh, you know, can get away from him sometimes out on the wing, you know, Every now and then he'll just disappear out there. So if this can, you know, kind of like what Gabe was saying, you know, with Emmy, you know, be you know a little bit of a launching pad you know, for him for the season. I think that can be a good thing. The other person that you know, stood out for me was uh, Jake Meacham. Meacham. I don't have we figured out how to say his last name? Oh um, God, Nate told me. Um, God, I can't remember it right now. The time of that because I'm being put on the spot. But yeah, Jake. Jake was good. <laughs> Jake was good. There we go. We'll go with that. Jake yeah, was so, good. Uh, he, you know. Played very well on the left. He switched over to the you know, right at the end of the game. Uh, you know, after you know, Beckett came in, and he didn't seem to you know, put a foot wrong that I can recall. So, you know, to me, you know, he's somebody I feel comfortable with on the field. You know, right now, you know, no idea if Hornsby's going to be ready to go for the next game or if he was just you know, it was precautionary that he wasn't on in the team, uh, but. You know, I think Jake has shown himself to be a uh, reliable option at either fullback position. Yeah. Um, I can be spoken into Jake. Me, personally, um, no one's stock particularly rose. Like, either the stock for me was already kind of high, so it kind of just flatlined, or either some stocks dropped. Now, me, personally, two people's stocks have dropped in this game. Um, I will say Luke and Chris Cole. Stock has probably dropped. Um, Luke did not have the best performance in the first half. Got called off at halftime. Um, had some pretty wild passes. I, I, I'm interested to see how you guys feel about it. But for Luke, what, like, what was it? Like, he he just did not play with the same kind of intensity. He seemed kind of very loose with the ball. You know, it was one point where he made like a wild pass. I think he looped over somebody's head, like it, it, it landed the kicker there. But it was just wow. What are, what are you guys' thoughts? Yeah, um, I I don't think Luke was really able to get into space with the ball at all. Mm-hmm. And for me, that's his bread and butter. Is if he can get into space, like he's fast. Um, he's kind of like so he he was challenged on the ball a lot, and he was under pressure a lot. Um, and so he just, he just didn't do the best under pressure in this game. And so the passing wasn't really there. It wasn't really clinical in the final third by him. Um, so yeah, I was, I was hoping to see him like score a goal or provide an assist or something in this game. Yeah. Yeah. In in a first half where I think I minus maybe one, maybe two instances, the kick was all kickers the whole time. I, the left wing was a little bit of a noticeable, uh, you know, hole compared to, you know, playing through the center, playing, you know, up the right, you know, playing out of the back. I uh, just looked off, you know, off the pace. And it's, I mean, when you're competing against, you know, guys like, you know, Gordon and Belmar and Bentley, you know, for minutes, it's, it's going to, it's a hard argument, you know, to make to Darren that, you know, you deserve another go. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's, it's going to definitely affect his, his minutes um, coming up because, I mean, like you said, there's not too many more opportunities when you're playing against teams that are lower than you, um, you know, coming across. 
the other player to me that stock is probably down is Chris Cole. Um, you know, I hate to say it. Well, not I hate to say it, but I kind of – he's at fault to me for the two goals that were scored. The first goal got scored after we went up 3 nothing. Um And I don't know. He just got beat by a Matt, in your words, a guy that closely resembles you. Yeah, that's not a compliment. No. <laughs> no. Like, like, I, I, I know who I am. I'm, you know, I can't go as far as to say 100% comfortable, you know, with that. You know, seeing yourself in, you know, in the stands on – uh, the replay, it's like, all right, t- get back in the gym, son. Uh, yeah. but yeah, then when you, you know, turn around and you're like, hey, you know, player on the field, you look like you're on the fast track to be one of us, yeah, in the stands. Nah, well, he definitely was on the fast track because he bullied Chris Cole twice, and it was not like I'm pretty sure Darren was probably pissed about the first goal. The second one, I'm not gonna lie, like, there's nothing you can do about that one. Well, yes, not, was, not foul him in the first place. But. Yeah, well, that that's true. Yeah, that's true. But, yeah, I don't know. Um, anyone from y'all, like anyone else, stocks is down to y'all or increase? Um, yeah, in terms of – now, I, I realized when you asked it, I didn't fully understand the question. I thought you were just saying who played a good game. <laughs> um, but <laughs> I was like, Emmy played a great game. But, uh, <laughs> but, but in terms of stock, I don't think anybody – like like everybody stayed pretty much level and I can agree with Chris Cole. Um, he had a hard game out there for sure. Um, I feel like it's like, it it was uncharacteristic of him too. Like he's been decent in the, in the, in the center back role. Like in the past, I've been comfortable with him coming in. So hopefully that was like a one-off bad performance and like, you know, comes back strong next time he's given a chance. And so, but yeah, that when he got beat in the box there, that was that was tough. Yeah. Um, also the weather in this game was pretty nasty, as you could tell, you know, with the lightning and thunder delays and all that stuff. Do you guys blame the weather at all for how the kickers passing was in this game? Or do you think it's just like as the weather, it is what it is. We got out with a win. I, I don't because I didn't think the passing was all that bad, really. Okay. You know, like if you go back Again, when you watch you know the broadcast version of it, they're praising the field like every five minutes you know, on there. They're uh, you know just loving it. You know how they're, it's not puddling up. How it you know it's, you know the ball's you know still staying nice and smooth you know on the ground. Uh, I don't think that had anything to you know, do with that. I think the bad passing was because they were making bad passes. Yeah, yeah. You know, so and and I don't think there were even like, too too many just like awful you know ones. Uh, a couple times, you know, we've talked about this other episodes where they've maybe, you know, got a little cute playing out of the back. And, uh, like I remember, you know, there was one, I think, before the goals started, you know, in the second half, you know, where Will, you know, at least from the camera angle, looked like he cut it, you know, a step close, you know, with the defender coming, you know, down on him, uh, and some other stuff. But overall, I thought more often than not, the passing was fine. So I didn't have an issue with that. Yeah. Okay. You got anything to say or? Yeah. I mean, if you, if you see, I agree that most of the passing was good, but there were a couple of moments where like, um, where I guess Jake <laughs> would try to play a long ball over like across to the wing, to the right wing. And, um, and it would just skip across the pitch, you know? And so um, the long ball was difficult to play because like, especially if it was played lower to the ground, like the ball would just like skip faster than it normally would because it was so wet, but that didn't happen that much. You know, I think I can only, I could probably count on one hand how often that happened. Like most of it was good. Yeah. No. Um, for me, I've, yeah, like, you, like you said, Matt, some of the passing was a little, for me, it was a little off. Like it wasn't as, I got about this. Like, it wasn't as crisp as I would have liked it to be. So that's why I was trying to mark it up, like, ah, maybe it's the weather. But there was a lot of, sometimes, you know, watching the game at home, you know, being dry, uh, where I was just like, like, why are we why, like, why are we moving the ball so slowly side to side? You know? Yeah, I mean, I, I get what you're saying. Yeah. But I feel like we talk about this, you know, in good weather games, too, with them, you know, that's sometimes. True. So That is also true. Yeah. So, yeah. Just, All right. <laughs> so... We'll move on from that point because you're right. We do talk about any good weather games, but 
like we were saying earlier, Emmy um, gets off the mark. He gets two goals and an assist in this game. Um, hopefully, this is the game to get him kick started. The first goal was really, really nice. Um, the combination play between Neil and Bentley to set up Emmy at the at the back post was really nice. Um, how did the second goal get scored? I'm trying to remember. Second goal was scored off. You know the. Uh... I can't remember if it was actually a corner or just, you know, a cross, you know, coming in from a throw in and he just kind of, uh, you know, redirects it in, you know, from the near post. Okay. Yeah, it was a corner kick first and then, uh, and then ball, like it got recycled back in possession. Yeah. That's what it was. Okay. And then the third goal was the Emmy flick on to Dakota in the back post. Yeah. Yeah. It basically dunked it in. Yeah. 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 We, yo. Also, Dakota had a couple of like good chances in this game. Like I think he had one in the first half that was like what, thirty or forty yards out. Thirty yards out. He almost hit a banger, man. He did. Yeah, he did. Yeah. I mean, I, I like you know him doing that every now and then. I don't, I don't want him taking like four of those a game. Yeah. Uh, but you know, keeping the de- defense honest, especially you know the way Cleveland was playing, they were, they were packing it in from the start. They were you know looking you know for. You know, zero zero. Maybe try to you know hit them on a you know break to get a, you know steal a one zero. Uh, you know, so when you're running into something like that, you know, showing that you're willing to take that shot, you know, further out, keeping you know the defensive shape a little more honest. Yeah. You know, might open up some space for Neil or uh, you know Zhao or you know whoever might else be in the middle that day. Well, yeah, that, and I mean also like looking at how. You know how much space we just give it up. Yeah, I don't mind Dakota taking that shot at all. Now, I would love for him to score it. <laughs> well, yeah, I'd love to see him score it. But yeah, no, nah, I don't mind you know taking that shot at all. Um, so we had a. Well, I'm trying to make sure I get this all right. We had a couple of new kids coming out on the field. Um, Becca Howe got an appearance. Who else? Uh, I think it was it. Yeah. Oh yeah, Becca was the only one. Yeah. And I was for him. How do we think he did on his debut? Yeah, I think he was solid. I mean, there was a there's one moment in particular, I believe, where uh, Colorado had him trapped in the corner, uh, the Red Army corner, and he was able to play the ball out of there, like out of pressure, um, just down the line. Um, and I forget who received it, but um, he did really well under pressure. In, in that game, uh, at least in that moment. And he looked like a professional, you know? I thought he looked good. Yeah, I thought he was pretty good. I mean, if you watch it back, you can see, you know, like mid, you know, mid-celebration of, uh, you know, Dakota's goal. You know, Mika, you know, tap, you know, pull Beckett out of the celebration and tell him, you know, go on up. And then it's 3-1 by the time he actually gets in, <laughs> you know, the game. So that was probably, you know, not the ideal setting that they wanted to put him in at, but they were, you know, committed to it, you know, by then. But I, I thought he, you know, showed well. I mean, he, he looked, you know, mostly you know, professional-ish. I mean, he's he's a skinny kid. He's like seventeen. You know, yeah, that yeah. that's the part where you know it's noticeable a little bit. You know, he just doesn't have you know, you know the muscle built up yeah. yet. But uh, in terms of you know style of play, I think. You know, if we needed him to do a job for five or ten minutes in a league game. I haven't seen a reason to think he can't. How about that? Yeah, I think so far, what out of the I'm a I'm gonna coin them the baby ruse. Beckett, Gabe, Octa- Octavio, and uh, Mumford. Yeah. He's the first one to get get in a game, right? Yeah. Octavio didn't get in last year, did he? I don't think so. Okay, yeah. So he's the so, first no. one to get. All right, there we go. So congrats to him on uh, his debut, and hopefully we see him some more, some more down the line. Um, but also on the day in this game, Richmond found out who they played, who they're going to play in the next round, which is a nice friend up 95 North in D.C. United. So that game is going to take place, what, April 25th at 6, 7 p.m.? 26? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, April 26th at 7 p.m., um, I haven't seen anything about a stream yet. Have y'all seen anything about DC's going to stream it? No. Also, mm-hmm. I think I saw seven thirty. Not that it makes that much of a difference, but just. I mean, we are dealing with MLS time, where they tell you a game is going to be at eight, and it don't start to eight twenty-five. It's probably I mean, going to be the case here too. So, yes. I mean, I feel like 
on a podcast for this game of all games. We can't throw stones. No, we can't. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to time, it's 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 a weird thing in the podcast land. Um, but yeah, we got DC United. Thoughts on that game and what are we expecting? I know we're gonna have Ted on later, probably in the next week or two, but overall thoughts on the draw. I mean, it's the biggest game that you know Richmond kickers can possibly get, right? I mean, the only downside of it is it's in DC and not in Richmond, you know, because I have no doubt in my mind, you know, that there'd be you know six thousand some people at City Stadium if you know DC was coming you know south instead of us you know going north. Uh, but you know, it's a team that's not playing great right now. You know, it's a, you know. Opportunity could be there. I have no idea if Wayne Rooney cares about the Open Cup. I have no idea what you know they're gonna you know, be planning on doing. But you know, if the kickers are on their game, there's a chance. You know, I'm not yeah. gonna say we're gonna go in and you know, be favorites or anything. That'd be you know, silly to say. But you know, I think if you know game plan you know goes to form. I mean, you know, look back last year. You know, we were right with Charlotte for a good while, and then. You know, the floodgates opened up at the end, but no reason to think the same thing can't happen again. Yeah. Gay, what's your thoughts about it, man? Yeah, I mean, I I, I totally agree with you, Matt. I, I wish it was a home game, you know, but it is what it is. DC is not a far drive, you know, two hours w- with no traffic. I feel pretty good about that. I'll be there, you know. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I think, like, if there's an MLS team to draw right now for the Open Cup, that's like that you want to play and that you feel like you have a pretty good chance against for me, it's DC. I mean, they like, they're not, I mean, they're winless since their opener against Toronto. Um, and they just haven't been able to score goals. Like it, it, it's, they've, they've struggled, you know? And so um, I like the draw. I, I could very much see like Wayne Rooney kind of viewing it as a throwaway game, playing a bunch of Academy guys. And then, our studs go in there, steal a one nil victory. You know, that's what I think is going to happen. Like I think they're just going to be like, all right, we'll play a lot of like the C list guys and a couple of academy kids mm-hmm. go in there and do that thing. Like, yeah, I all that I hope and I really hope this is that my only criticism of the U.S. Open Cup game last year that I was watching on the beach in Cancun <laughs> is that Darren doesn't get the game too stretched. You know, and like DC, every Charlotte with the talent they had just started just carving through us. But outside of that, I think we can take it to DC. I like our chances. Also, I would not surprise if Nathan Ani says something mean to Wayne Root. I would not put it past him. <laughs> yeah, man. It, it, past. it could happen. But I will say this, though. Yeah, I would have loved it if DC United had to come to Richmond. Because I know Section O would have had a whole bunch of talks with Wayne Rooney. Mm-hmm. It would have been it would have been the same. Um, so yeah, so we got that draw. That should be fun. Um, outside of that, I mean, we could have also gotten Loudon. We could have gotten now Loudon was in a different group. It was Pittsburgh oh, or Maryland Bobcats? Okay, Pittsburgh or Maryland. Okay. Yeah, Pittsburgh would have been bottom of my list because that's more like nostalgia. Like, the, what was the old old guard shield, whatever? That was that was dumb anyway. That was just something, you know. Yeah. The teams that um, knew that they were better at that point made up. Yeah. And then uh, Maryland would have been cool. I would have liked Maryland. I think we would have got past that and then eventually going on. But we'll see. We'll see how we do with DC. I'm pretty sure. Um, that's going to be a full strength game for the Richmond Kickers. So, yeah, yeah don't, don't play the weekend before, so they should be well rested. And yeah, you know, it's er, it's early enough in the season. I'd rather go you know, for it in the Open Cup game and you know roll the dice that we might be tired or you know, play a few reserves against Tormenta on the weekend. Yeah, because they'll be playing midweek too. So yeah, yeah, you know, they'll have you know the same you know, kind of uh, pick your poison situation that we do. Yeah, pretty much. Um, so the game that we got coming up on the 15th this weekend is against no code, Northern Colorado Hellstorm. Um, they had a week off as well this week. So what are we thinking about in this game? They started off hot so far this year. Um, they picked up a three nil win over Tormenta. 
a nil-nil draw with Chattanooga, and then um, they probably own the state of Colorado as they have beaten the Switchbacks 3-1 for the second year in a row. If you're the Switchbacks, man, you got to be annoyed with yourself if you lost twice in the Open Cup to a team that has not played a home game till probably late June. That's hilarious to me. But, yeah, um, thoughts on no? What do we think about Noko? Like, how do we expect this game to go? How is Darren going to line up? I mean, I think we're going to see the usual crew. Uh, I think the questions are, is Hornsby healthy? I think, you know, it's going to be a, which combination of Bentley, Bellamar, and Gordon start on the wings. Other than that, I'm willing to you know, bet almost anything we could nail every other position right now. Yeah. Did Zhao do enough to to get a start in this game over Sukal? I wouldn't. I wouldn't say so. Um, he played well. Um, he also, we talked about Dakota's near, near banger. Um, Zhao actually almost had a pretty sweet shot outside the 18 mm-hmm. also. Um, so he, you know, I, I will say like he, Zhao is someone I'm really excited about. Hopefully he sticks around for next year too. Um, I could like, he gives me like young Ethan Bryant vibes, you know, um, plays plays like that so um but yeah i think i think suko gets a start there okay all right yeah i i think it's the same i think you can probably name this lineup outside of two positions you know at this point it's fair to say that bentley is a right winger like i don't think we've seen bentley on the left like that have we i don't think so i mean maybe, maybe once or twice but for the That's most part he's usually on the right yeah yeah so I'm assuming it's going to be Belmar, Gordon, Emmy, and then probably it's if Hornsby's good to go against Noko, then you put him on there. Honestly, I would like that matchup for Hornsby to see him up against uh, Arthur Rogers, who is a right back that is damn near a right winger. Um, yeah, there's not much back to his game. No, it's not at all. If you're Darren, how do you plan for him? Because you know he's going to push up high. You know he's going to push up high and wide. Are you putting Gordon in there to kind of exploit that space and, and hoping that, like, all right, we can get Gordon in behind where Rodgers is supposed to be and then force Rodgers to kind of stay further back? I mean, I like th- I like that idea, you know, because you, know, you make them decide, like, all right, you can push them up, you know, go for it, but you're either going to have to slide somebody over or, you know, we're going to, you know, go right at that, you know, space. Yeah. You know, so – uh, I think there's choices to you know to be made there, uh, but you know you think back to you know, some of the last season's matchups, you know, with them. Uh, granted, one of them, you know, they had a guy get a red card, you know, fairly early on, so that kind of you know, changes things up yeah. a little bit. But you know, we, you know, a lot of wing, you know, wing attack, no, no surprise there. So I think you know Darren's going to continue to try to you know use those you know, kind of uh, you know, middle spaces. We know Neil likes to drift out into that left wing area a little bit more, you know, to do his attacking and you know you go at the heart. You know. Yeah. Yeah, it's gonna be interesting to see how Darren kind of attacks his Noko lineup. Also, I think I want to say Parlo's gonna play. I don't know. It's, it's been weird with their attacking lineup so far this year. Um update in the table, Matt, like you said, we fell down to what I think we're like seventh right now, but that's just because other teams are catching up with us. There's no reason to panic or anything there. Yeah, um, I mean, te- technically, except they've had new listed six, but we're literally the exact same record across the board: two goals, four, two goals a sit against yeah. North Carolina's head by technically one goal. So, whatever at this point. Yeah. And like, also, like you said before, Matt, like we have a full what like, we have this game and then a full week off before we play DC United again, and then. Um, on the road to Tormenta on the 29th, and then a weird single de Mayo game against Union Omaha. But, um, it, I mean, Richmond has all the opportunity to go into the D.C. United game, but also this NOCO game with some positive energy. Um, is there anyone in this game, in the NOCO game, for both of y'all, that you're going to be looking at to have a, to have that good game, to have that you know MVP type of game? For me, um, for me, like the the guy who like stood out the most, 
aside from Emmy, because he, you know, created like he was a part of every goal against uh, Cleveland. But the guy that I'm expecting to play really well uh, against Noko is Neil. Um, he was elite against Cleveland, like just created chances was ridiculous. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping that this is also kind of like a springboard for him too into, into the NOCO game. Yeah. Neil needs a score. Like that. You know what? Yeah. Hey, I agree with you. He needs a score. Um, I'm going with Neil to have a breakout game this, this week. I think he's came close in with the last three games. No, four games. He's came like steadily closer. So, yeah, Hopefully it's time. I think he's knocking on the door for a goal. He'll, I think maybe this is the one he gets it. Yeah, Matt, anyone for you? Yeah, Cl- close to what you all were saying. I think presumably Suko, you know, yeah. we're assuming he goes back into that spot. Uh, you know, he's been doing perfectly fine so far, but I think if he can you know, take that next step forward, you know, a little bit, and you know, part of that is you know, being, you know, maybe a little more aggressive and driving forward with the ball. I think he's done a good job cycling it thus far and being uh, responsible, I suppose, is the way to you know, put it you know, in possession a lot of times. But, you know, taking those you know, chances and, you know, not necessarily, you know, uh, worrying about, oh, is this going to result in a turnover? You know, it's going to happen sometimes, but, you know, those positives that can come of it, I think, can you know, be larger positives than, uh, you know, a negative if he's pushing forward, you know, in, you know, the Northern Colorado half yeah. right there. Yeah. Oh, also, last question. I meant to ask you this. Um, Will Palm Chris, who I like to call Willie Palms, because he had another great save in the Cleveland game. Um, do you think he'll get another start in this game, or do you think Akira comes back? Is – Akira on paternity leave? Is that basically like the way we're viewing this? I want to say yes. I, I think so too. Um, so in that case, I think he gets another start out there. Yeah. He's from Colorado. It'll be kind of cool, you know. Be a cool. I give you a cool story if you can go out there and start. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if it is paternity leave, I mean, I think that's like six weeks. You know, I mean, I don't know how long. I've never. Well, been it's not real. It's not really leave. A, we're in America, and we don't we don't believe in that kind of stuff here. Uh, <laughs> but B, I mean, he was on the bench for you know uh, the last Charlotte game, so he was there. Uh, and okay. I think they they work different kind of schedules here, but I also can't imagine that Akira wants to you know, sit out essentially a month either. And he's a competitor. Yeah, he's right. a professional. Yeah, like, uh, most know. athletes that. You know, I've come across are usually pretty hardwired to Fight want to get out there. Yeah, uh, and I think that Darren is probably going to want him you know, to be out there for the DC game, and I don't know if he's going to want his first game back to be the DC game. <laughs> yeah, that'd be tough. Yeah. So we're probably all expecting like ninety percent ish to have a care back, right? I would put my money on that as of right now. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I, I, I'm like 75% thinking yeah. that. I think case. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it's like problematic if Will is in there. Uh, but, you know, I, I'm still convinced right now that, you know, Kira gives you a little bit extra. Yeah. I think Will's done enough in his stretch to say, like, justifiable playing in more games, maybe against like a Lexington or. Yeah, it gets a um, random game here and there later yeah. in the season. Yeah. Yeah, he's done. I'd like to see him. Yeah, I mean, he's quite a shot stopper, man. He, he is. He, neither, I will say, he could have. I don't think he could have done anything about the two goals that were scored on him in, against Cleveland. Oh no, 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 two. no. He's he's done. He's done. He's done a fantastic job stepping in for Akira um, while he becomes a new dad. So uh, once again, shout out to Akira. I'm becoming a pops. Um, guys, I know this is a quick pod, so we're probably going to hear. Um, anything else from y'all before we uh wrap up the show? I take that as a no. No, uh, I mean, you know, just fun out there. Uh, you know, I think you know, survive in advance is the name of the game when it comes you know, to the cup. Uh, you know, so okay. there's a different kind of survive in advance than last year, where you know went forever. You know, before we you know finally scored a goal. You know, this time we put up the goals and then try to give it away. 
Yeah. Uh, but, you know, we can just do the same thing to DC and just, yeah. you know, steal one off of them. Yeah. I mean, I, I agree with you, Matt. I think there's, there really wasn't a whole lot to say about the Cleveland match. We dominated possession. We had, you know, 25 shots, like a bunch of those were on goal. Like, you know, it was, it was our match to lose even, even towards the end. Like we were up three nil, like, I don't know that we really could say that much more about it. So I will say, I thought the Cleveland keeper quite good. You know, I think they said he was only you know twenty or twenty one years old. So he's you know somebody you know maybe keep an eye on you know for yeah. down the road. Might see him in League One. Yeah, cool. yeah. Keep an eye on see what's up. Um, I'm looking for DC though. I think that we um, be on the lookout for like carpools up to DC. Like I oh, think. Yeah. People are trying to organize carpools. People are trying to like, you know, get up. Yeah, I think lots, we, lots of lots of options how to how to do it too. You, know, you can, you know, you can even you know look into the Amtrak, take it up to Union Station, you get up to Fredericksburg, pick up the VRE, you know, into the in you know, the city, and then you know hop on the metro, you know, down to uh, you know Navy Yard, you know, where the stadium is. Uh, so that's what I'm. Gonna it's, do. it's a nice area. You know, get up there early enough. You know, be able to you know check out. They've built up the area around Nats Park really well and. You know, Audi Field is literally just kind of right across the street from it, so you can make a you know, t- take a half day out of Richmond, head up a little bit early, so you're not dealing with that as much of the you know 95 nonsense, and you know enjoy your time in the city, and then uh, you know enjoy your time you know taking three points home with you. All right, enjoy it. Um, so yeah, so if you want to stay connected for all that news, make sure you follow. Um, the River City Red Army on Twitter, on Facebook, and Instagram, because um, I'm pretty sure more info is going to be dropping very soon about all that stuff, because that's coming up soon. I unfortunately won't be able to join in because I have grad school class, which sucks. Mm. And it's it's a real shame you've uh, you know, come down with that bug on the 24th. Right. You know, all <laughs> of a sudden, <laughs> shit, I can't talk properly on the 24th. But yeah, that'll be fun. Um, but for Matt, for Gabe, and myself, and Shanir, um, we just want to say thank y'all for taking the time out of your day for listening to our show. As always, make sure that you follow the show on Instagram, Twitter, um, podcast everywhere at River City 93. And also check out the website, rivercity93.com, where articles are coming shortly when we get free time. But with that being said, we will holler at you guys next week. Up the ruse and be safe. Oh, my God.